Hey YouTube, Matt back with another part of the three-point hitch trailer hitch receiver build. That's a mouthful. This is 12 inch, supposedly, uh, standard two inch square hitch receiver tube. You can pick this up for, I think, $14. Uh, and of course, you know, take the 20% off coupon. This gives you, you know, the exact size dimension that you need for <clears throat> One of these guys, your average run-of-the-mill two-inch draw bar, will slide right in there and it's already cross-drilled for the pin. I don't think you could build this <laughs> much much cheaper than you can buy it, except it's supposedly 12 inches long. Now, it turns out if you measure this thing out of the box, it's about 11 and 7 eighths. Um, so, Harbor Freight, what are you going to do? I don't need it nearly that long. I only need it long enough to hold the draw bar, you know, back past the pin. So what I did is I cut six and a half inches off of it. So I have what should be five and a half uh, minus the quarter they cheated me and minus a saw kerf. It's a little bit longer than five inch long draw tube left. What I'm getting ready to do is to weld the receiver tube to my, my draw bar here, whatever the heck this piece is, is ended up calling. I have drilled my holes for the pins for the Cat 1 hitch in the end. I have shined this up to a bright, shiny, silver, brand new steel look uh, all the way, ev everywhere that's going to get welded. It comes powder coated. You can't, even with flux core, uh, effectively weld through that. So had to grind all of that off and then hit it with a flap disc so it's really, really clean. But I have a problem. <laughs> and that is the size of this draw tube. This is quarter inch, 250 thou steel. And we're still dealing with the 90 amp Harbor Freight flux core welder. Uh, that's a problem. There is not a prayer of welding quarter inch steel in one pass with a 90 amp welder. It's just not going to happen. But there are two things that are mitigating this problem for us. One is that we don't necessarily have to weld all the way into the quarter inch steel. This is only one eighth steel. So as long as we have equivalent strength to one eighth, we're good, right? If I had a quarter inch solid weld, so what? All that would happen is the steel would break somewhere else first. So I only really need one eighth penetration here. The other thing that kind of works for us is that we have this nice big surface back here. I'll move the camera around so you can see it. So we're going to be able to get this bad boy, right? This is uh, just your standard propane torch with a cylinder of map gas on it. What we're going to do is we're going to preheat the quarter inch piece uh, within an inch of its life, frankly. We're going to get it as hot as I can get it with this torch. And then we're going to come in with the wire welder and we're going to go ahead and weld what we're looking for is a good, solid, you know, the equivalent of one eighth to one eighth with full penetration. Uh, if I can get that, this thing is going to be as strong as, you know, the weakest parts it's made from. Well, she looks a little different. <laughs> All right, so this part is extra. Well, not really extra. You need it in the final analysis, but there she blows. One welded on receiver two. It's still a little warm. Uh, absolutely, positively required preheat in order to do anything with a quarter inch, 250 thou metal. Uh, with a 90 amp wire welder, uh, flux core, DCEN modifications notwithstanding, this is thick stuff, and it just it needs more than 100 amps to do anything with it. Um, so, preheat, bevel all of the joints, uh, grind them out, leave yourself a nice deep groove, and multi-pass. That's something that a lot of people forget. They go, oh, it's 250 thousandths, you need like 300 amps to MIG weld it. Yeah, if you want to weld it in one pass. Uh, what I did is essentially three passes. I did a, a root pass way down in the bevel. I did a second pass 
tying that first one into the, the thicker metal. And then I did a third one to tie those two, you know, back into, into this stuff. So I, uh, you know, I wouldn't take this on the highway <laughs> with, the, with a lot of weight on it. But for moving an empty utility trailer and a boat around, you know, on the property, I'm not too worried about it. The other thing that is done is the holes are drilled in the ends. They're not deburred, but there are holes. And they're going to receive these pins. These things were $3.99 plus state of Pennsylvania tax. And uh, so they're just not worth trying to fabricate yourselves. They have the holes already in them for the pins. They have the taper. They're exactly the right size for a category one implement. So you know they're going to fit on the tractor. And they couldn't be any simpler. They've got one nut on here that sets how far in does this thing go. And then there's a lock washer, and there's this big bad boy on the back, and you thread them on, and voila, you have the pins that are going to attach to the actual tractor. Next on deck is to rig up some supports for this. I had uh, originally figured I would just leave it like this and kind of see what happened, but obviously I've got, the, uh, I've got the geometry here to run iron from the back of the receiver tube to the back edge of this stuff, and there's plenty of room on a tractor. It's not gonna get in the way of anything. So, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take ye old piece of iron, and if I run it something like this, I can cut just a slight bevel angle on this end of this piece of iron, and just tack it onto the top of here, and I'll have a nice, diagonal-ish kind of a brace to hold up the back end of the tube and make this whole structure a lot more rigid. I have the first cross brace for the back cut. It turns out to be, oh, I don't know, a 10 degree angle, maybe 15, something like that. I, frankly, I didn't measure it. I held this piece up here and marked it with a marker and just cut it because I need, I need a little gap for the weld anyway. Prep is everything. It's a welding and paint are the two places where your preparation time will pay off in spades. I am gonna move the camera and try to get a decent arc shot out of this, which probably won't work. Worst case scenario, I'll see you on the flip side when this is attached. Finished product, we've got a diagonal piece that runs the length of this thing. It's all tied in there. It's been wire brushed, no grinding. I'm going to try and grind as little as possible on this thing because frankly there's no, uh, there's no point in grinding away weld which may or may not be contributing to strength. Got another one of these to do and then this bottom unit is going to be complete. Well, YouTube, so far so good. Our buddy, the 90 amp wire welder from Harbor Freight is holding up fantastically. Little help here and there never hurts. I don't consider it cheating. This is not going anywhere. Uh, we'll see, I guess, when I get it on the tractor with the hydraulics and the weight of the trailer and everything, you can you put a lot more stress on it than I can here on the bench with the, even with a hammer. Um, but boy, it, I couldn't be happier with how it's turned out so far. I hit the whole thing with a flat disc just because I'm going to paint this John Deere green or yellow. I haven't made up my mind yet. But for the most part, the bottom of this is, uh, is done. I took the pins off for the paint job. and We'll have to put them back on, obviously. In part three, I will finish up the fabrication of this. I need to run diagonals from the ends here up and build some sort of a bracket that the top link can fit into. I'll probably also run a vertical piece uh, from here up to that same arrangement. So it'll be tied in and triangulated and as strong as it's gonna be. That, however, is a project for another day. Stay safe, YouTube.